letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, all we who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. For we were buried with him by means of baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ has risen from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we also may walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we shall be so in the likeness of his resurrection also. For we know that our old self has been crucified with him in order that the body of sin may be destroyed, that we may no longer be slaves to sin. For he who is dead is acquitted of sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live together with Christ. For we know that Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death shall no longer have dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives unto God. Thus do you consider yourselves also as dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time when there was a great crowd with Jesus and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples together and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, for behold, they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away to their homes fasting, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come from a distance. And his disciples answered him, How will anyone be able to satisfy these with bread here in the desert? And he asked them, How many loaves have you? And they said, Seven. And he bade the crowd recline on the ground. Then, taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few little fishes, and he blessed them and ordered them to be distributed. And they ate and were satisfied, and they took up what was left of the fragments, seven baskets. Now those who had eaten were about four thousand, and he dismissed them. The saving words of the gospel. Please kneel for your prayerful vocations. Let us ask God to give worthy priests, brothers and sisters, to his holy church. O God, we earnestly beseech thee to bless this diocese with many priests, brothers and sisters, who will love thee with their whole strength and gladly spend their entire lives to serve thy church and to make thee known and loved. Bless our families. Bless our children. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, Obtain for us many more. There are all the, the following announcements. We have wonderful hand missiles available, both in Latin and English, and Latin and Spanish. I hope that you'll, uh, if you don't have a, a hand missile, at least one in your family, that you'll take advantage of this opportunity to acquire a wonderful tool of spiritual warfare the spiritual life. Also, uh, we have a spiritual bouquet going uh, for uh, Bishop Hying, our new bishop here in Madison. We're trying to get this uh, completed before his birthday. <clears throat> uh, for weeks now, I've been hoping that we could have something printed up that you could uh, uh, be able to sign up, we could distribute and you could sign up, but that just doesn't seem to be materializing. So we're going to uh, direct you once again to the website of the Tridentine Mass of the, of the Di Tridentine Mass Society of the Diocese of Madison, and that is latinmassmadison.org, latinmassmadison.org, and you can use that to sign up for your spiritual bouquet. Um, having received these, uh, 
from time to time in my own life, I can testify, I can attest personally that they are a wonderful encouragement. And bishops have extremely heavy yokes on their shoulders. And um, I think he would probably appreciate it, especially as he's beginning his ministry here in Madison. Another thing that I should make you aware of here is that there's going to be a highway project, the Dane County Department of Public Works Highway and Transportation uh, put out a note that um, from July 22nd all the way through November Mineral Point Road is going to be torn up. Um, so that's like from where you pass where that What's it called? The Quick Trip? You know, the gas station convenience store, this Quick Trip, all the way down to here. It's going to be torn up and it's going to make it, I think, a little more interesting to get here every morning. It's something that you can start planning alternate routes, isn't that what they call it? Use alternate routes. I think they'll probably have detours indicated, but if you know about it ahead of time, that's going to be save you a lot of frustration. Leave a little earlier to come to Holy Mass. I think that's the bottom line. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We have today a miracle of our Lord multiplying uh, loaves and fishes to feed a multitude. I always find, you know, he did this twice, right? And the fact that he did it twice is, is very significant, and I'll t touch on that um, twofold uh, multiplication of loaves to feed the multitudes in just a moment. But it, it always occurs to me when I read this thing. The, the one that we hear today, for example, is the second time he has done this in the Gospel of Mark. He did this also in, in a couple of chapters before, in chapter 6. We're in chapter 8 now. And so and the, the other time, he fed even more people and they collected you know, 12 baskets of, of, of things left over. And this time, they're out there in the desert with them again, same kind of situation, and the Lord says, how much food, how are all these people are here? And the, like, once again, the disciples say, how are we going to feed all these people? But he just did it. You, you kind of wonder, just, you know, where are their heads? Where's their attention? And in fact, a couple of... After this little pericope that we hear, pericope is a technical word meaning a cutting of scripture, a little bit of scripture that's used in a liturgical context. So right after this reading right here, the, the, you know, they're talking about what's going on here, and the Lord says to them, Do you still not get this? Do you still not get this? Are your hearts still hard? Are you not paying attention to what's going on here? Well, for them it would have been a little easier to figure out what was going on because they were much closer to the scriptures. Some of you are rem probably old enough to remember when they were putting out um, sound systems with quadraphonic sound. You remember that? Where it come at you from four different directions. The um, um, the uh, the issue of the twofold feeding of the multitudes out in the wilderness is extremely important because what we have here is a manifestation of the Lord as the new Moses leading a new exodus to a new promised land and a new temple. The fact is, is that he is the new promised land. He is the new temple. Now, for us who don't have, for example, the Law and the Prophets and so forth practically memorized, but for the first century Jews they would have understood that they were much much closer to the, to the scriptures than we are today. 
And they would have started to make some connections here if they had been paying attention. The one of the miracles took place in the south, and one of them took place in the north. In the north, the Assyrians had come down centuries before and had destroyed, basically destroyed and dispersed ten of the tribes of Israel, dispersed them and scattered them out throughout all the Gentiles, and then they brought uh, pagan peoples in and they settled that area. In Then a couple of hundred years later, then we have the Babylonians come down and they invade Judah and they take the, the people off to exile. They're only there for a few decades, but it, they eventually will return. But one of the things that they were waiting for, that the Jews of the time of our Lord were waiting for, was a new Messiah who would be a great kingly figure like David, who would ha also be like Moses and who would lead a new exodus and gather all of the peoples, all of the, all of the, the tribes back. There would be a new exile where they would lead them back from the nations, back to Jerusalem. Then there would be established a new earthly, beautiful Davidic kingdom. Well, the Lord is manifesting himself as as Davidic priestly king, but he's also the new Moses. And you can see this feeding of the people in the wilderness, just like Moses had asked God to feed the people in the wilderness as they, would want, as they were moving towards the promised land. What happened? They were fed some a bread-like substance called manna, but they were also fed fed quails, remember? This whole business of the fish. I was thinking about, you know, what is this deal with the fish? You know, why, how would this fit into the, the, the symbolism of, of the Lord as the new Moses? And I found in one commentary, I was reading, going back, and I read Numbers. And uh, in Numbers, I think it's Numbers 10 or 11, it talks about how the Lord, about how God rose up brought up a great wind and the quail that they were to eat along with the manna were blown in from the sea almost as if they're they're described almost as if they are sea creatures to be di distributed among the people so we have here in the desert now we have in the wilderness we have bread and we have fishes thus fulfilling in a way the same typology or giving, giving a, a messianic explanation to the typology that we, was going on with Moses and the people in the wilderness. What the Lord is doing is he's demonstrating himself to be a new Moses leading all of the peoples, the ones that are in the north, not just the tribes of Israel, not just the Jews, but all of the nations too, all of the Gentiles now are being fed. That's why he does it in the north and why he also does it in the south, among the Jews and then above the Gentiles in the north. By the way, this is one of the reasons why he's so very angry in the temple. When he gets to the temple and he sees that all of the, 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 the courtyard of the Gentiles has been taken over by tables and stands and people selling uh, things for the sacrifice and so forth. They had taken over the temple, or the courtyard of the Gentiles, so the Gentiles didn't have any place to pray. But one of the signs of the fulfillment of all the prophets was that the nations would come to Jerusalem to the temple to pray. And if they were being denied their space to pray, this couldn't happen. So he overturns the temples, which harking back to to what Jeremiah prophesied about the destruction of the temple by the, by the Babylonians, it would be, it would be a, you know, a destruction. So this is overturning of the temples is a symbolic destruction of the temple, demonstrating to everybody that he is the new temple. Just as he is the new Moses, he is the new promised land. But they were slow to see these things. You get a feeling sometimes that all that they were kind of mailing it in. You know, these the people the Lord describes that these people had been out there with him for three days, following him around in the wilderness for three days with nothing to eat. 
in another moment, the Lord goes to, when he's in the garden, and he has agony in the garden, and he goes to his disciples and he says, Can't you even stay awake for, with me for an hour? They miss the point. They fall short. Well, I think we have to make a, a, along with our examination of conscience, which should be frequent, we have to really explore our hearts to see if we are just mailing it in. Are we going through the motions? Acting outwardly, uh, like good, normal Catholics, with our devotions, and coming to Mass, and praying in a reverent way, and so forth, and making responses. I've, I've been hearing responses and some singing. By the way, if there are you know, I, for many years I directed a, a Gregorian chant scola when it was in Rome, all of women, and they sang beautifully. They sang better than the men, as a matter of fact. Maybe there are a bunch of uh, women and young women in, uh, out there who would like to form a Gregorian chant scola. I'd be delighted to have you sing at Holy Mass. Just saying. But if we... We can go through the motions... Outwardly, everything looks great. But inwardly, it, it may not actually be happening. We're not connecting on all of the different levels and all the spheres of our life. We're not pursuing true holiness. Remember, the holiness is more than ticking boxes of obeying laws or fulfilling devotions or, or so forth. Holiness is, is far more radical than that. Following the rules is righteousness. It's not necessarily holiness. And yet we're called to holiness, not just righteousness, but also holiness. The outward might be pretty well squared away. But remember what our Lord said to the scribes and the Pharisees. Woe to you! Woe to you! You are like whitewashed sepulchers. Outside, everything's great. Inside, is death and corruption. That uh, word, he calls them hypocrites. Well, what does he say? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites, he says. He uses this word hypocrites. Hypocrites, hypocrites in Greek um, can mean several things. But including a stage actor. where you play a role, you're playing a role who isn't really you. Outwardly you're going through actions, you're saying things, you've got a costume on, and you're playing a role. But it's not really you. That's one of the words of, that's one of the interpretations of the Greek word hypocrites, hypocrite. Someone just going through the motions. Someone, in a way, someone who's just mailing it in. I think we're at a time in, we're certainly at a time in our church when, with all the various crises that we ha see going on around us, that we cannot afford to mail it in anymore for the sake of our loved ones, because we're all in this together, giving a good example to others so that perhaps they wake up and begin pursuing holiness. Not just checking boxes, but really in a radical way, responding to the universal call to holiness that the church throughout all of the centuries has been giving us. Food for thought during the week. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.